You've probably already noticed that most anatomical structures have odd Latin or Greek names, so how can you go about learning them? If you've studied either language at school, you may find learning these words easier, but please don't think that Latin GCSE is a prerequisite for learning anatomical names. I may have studied Latin at school myself, but due to an unfortunate mix-up between the words for wife and bear, I also failed Latin, and I've still been able to learn these terms. So here are my top tips for learning Latin. First, look for the familiar. Lots of English words are derived from Latin, so they may look and sound familiar. If you can find these links, they'll often tell you something about the muscle. So, if a muscle is called longus, what do you think that tells us about its shape? It's probably going to be long. Similarly, you might see a muscle described as rectus. If you rectify something, you straighten it out, and so this tells us the muscle will be straight. Sometimes the links are less obvious, but they're still there. For example, sartorius is a long muscle in the thigh. It shares a root with the word sartorial, meaning pertaining to tailoring, clothing, or styles of dress. In the past, tailors would work by sitting cross-legged on the floor. Sartorius is the muscle that allows you to sit cross-legged, and so it became known as the tailor's muscle. Next, look for patterns. Anatomists can be lazy. If we find a good name for one thing, we sometimes just copy and paste it with slight tweaks. Finding these patterns can help you work out what the words mean. For example, look at biceps, triceps, and quadriceps. We have two, three, and four sets, whatever they might be. If we look at those muscles, we can see that they're composed of multiple muscle bellies or heads. Biceps have two, triceps have three, and quadriceps have four. So the word sep must relate to muscle bellies. How about this group? Adductor brevis, adductor longus, and adductor magnus. All of them have the same first name, so what do they have in common? If we look at them on the body, we can see that all of them pass from the pelvis to the medial thigh, making them adductors of the hip joint. So these muscles share a name because they all share a function. What about the second part of their name? We know what longus means, so these words must be telling us about the shapes of the different muscles. Brevis shares a root with the English word brevity. If someone's known for their brevity, they're very concise, and this is a short, concise adductor of the hip. Magnus shares a root with magnificent, and is our largest, most magnificent adductor. I also remember this because it sounds a bit like magnum, and a magnum is quite a large ice cream. This leads on to the final point, break the names down. When you see a name like Extensor Digitorum Longus, it's natural to panic. But try to stay calm, breathe, and look at each of the words in turn to see if you can make any sense of it. First, we have Extensor. We saw earlier how some muscles are named after their actions, so this muscle is extending something. But what? Well, it extends our Digitorum, a word that sounds pretty similar to the English word digit, aka our fingers and toes. This muscle is in the leg, so it's going to be extending our toes. Finally, we have longus telling us that this is a long muscle. But it also tells us something else. Generally, we try and make the names of muscles as short as possible. So if we bother to add longus to the name of one muscle, it suggests there's another extensor digitorum that's a different shape. In this case, extensor digitorum brevis in the foot. So that's my quick guide to learning anatomical names. If you meet these words, try and find the logic behind them and it will make learning them much easier, and possibly even fun. Remember, if I can do it, so can you. Good luck.